Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do a quick video today about my favourite uh, bushcraft or woodcraft axe. Um, now, I did a little video a while ago um, showing you all of my axes um, and, and what I use each of them for and I think I may have mentioned that this particular axe here, uh, which is a Grands Falls Brox mini hatchet, um, is, is pretty much my favourite axe. Um, now there's a number of reasons for that and I'll, I'll kind of explain that as we go along in the video. Uh, but basically, you know, the main purpose of this um, for me is its size. So if I kind of put my hand up here, the head is just a tiny bit smaller than my hand. The actual handle itself is pretty much the length of my hand. So it, it really is a very small sort of versatile tool. Um, now you can slip this in a pack, you can put it in a bag. Um, you know, you'll, e you'll even fit it kind of in your pocket. Um, albeit, you know, depending on the size of your pocket, it may stick out a little bit like this. But again, I can walk around with this in my local woodland, no problem at all. Um, and you, you know, yes, there's, you know, it is an axe. It does have a little bit of weight to the head, but it, you know, you, it's not going to get, um, you know, in your way too much. You're not carrying a great big kind of like, you know, 20, 25 inch um, hafted axe. Um, and again, for me, oh, yeah, although I make no, no secrets about the fact that I am a, a big fan of the Grands Falls Brox products, um, you know, I'm a real, real big fan of their tools, um, for me it's not so much the manufacturer um, which has led me to choose this as my favourite axe, it's, it's the size and it's the versatility. Um, now again, without trying to start a big political debate, um, there are a lot of people who kind of ask the question, you know, why, what's the point of carrying uh, an axe in the UK? Do, do you need an axe to practice bushcraft in the UK? Um, and the short, short answer is no, you absolutely don't. Um, however, I do genuinely believe that having an axe, if it's something that you wish to use, um, can be very beneficial. Um, you certainly don't need it. Um, and again, it all depends on what sort of bushcraft you're doing. I do quite a lot of carving. Um, you can carve exclusively with a knife. Um, and I, but that said, I find using an axe, especially for sort of roughing things out, um, is really, really useful for me. Um, and again, the small weight and size of this axe means that I can kind of throw it in my bag. I've not got a great deal um, to carry around with, not too much extra weight, um, and I find it really useful. Um, but just to give you an example, um, you know, I've got a little random off cut here. Um, there's a big knot in there, so there's not a great deal I'm going to be able to do with this particular piece of wood, and it'll probably end up going for firewood. Um, but if I'm out and about, I'm in camp and I want to make a fire. So I'll take the axe. Depending on what I want to do, you know, obviously swinging an axe, um, even if you know what you're doing, um, you know, you, you want to make it as safe as possible. So I'll normally take a branch and I've got my mallet here just because that's what I've got to hand. Um, and what I'll do, I'll essentially use this to bat on through the, um, through the wood. So I'm splitting down my firewood, I'm processing it down. And there you go, you know, you can, you can process a lot of firewood very, very quickly with a small axe like this. Um, now you can use it in the more traditional kind of um, chopping method with an axe. You know, you can, if you can get this to balance. There you go, so again, you can use your axe in the more traditional manner, like so. I've only taken a little small piece off the side there, but again, you get the idea. Um, and I can carry on doing that with a piece of wood like this, nice and easily, and you can process a lot of firewood. Um, now, again, the other thing I use the axe for quite a lot is for carving. Now, doesn't matter what you're using it for. If I take this piece of wood, for example, um, what I can do, I'll just tidy this up a little bit. So, I've got a small billet of wood like this. Um, now I could do 101 different things with this. Um, you know, I could make a spoon, I can do temp pegs, I can do what I like. But let, let's just say, for example, I want to make a quick temp peg. Um, So, for example, it's taken me 10 seconds just to put a very rough point on the end of this. Now, I know it's nothing pretty, um, however, you know, I can now use this. I kind of put a little notch in the end. Now, I can probably make that a bit more pronounced, but again, I've got a small notch just in there which will quite happily take a, a guy line for a tent 
and I very, very quickly made a temp peg. Now you can do that with a knife. Um, it will probably, in my opinion, it would take slightly longer. Um, this is probably a little too big for a, for a temp peg anyway, but you've got to get my idea. Um, and again, I can also use this axe if I want to carve something out. You know, I can take a look at this. What do I want to make? Maybe I'll make a spoon. You know, it doesn't take very long at all to start sort of roughing that blank out. Again, I'm not going to make a whole spoon out of this, but again, you can kind of see where I'm going. You know, I've got my uh, my larger end here where I'll probably put in my bowl. It's got the handle, uh, but again, you know, this is taking kind of you know less than a minute. Um, and yes, I could do exactly the same thing with a knife, but it would take considerably longer. Um, the other benefit of this very small axe, and again, depends on what you want to carry with you. I will normally always carry some form of knife with me when I'm out bushcrafting. Um, but again, because it's such a small axe and the handle's so small, you can choke right up. Um, and by that I mean you can get your fingers right up to the axe head like I've got here. Um, and you can basically use it as a sort of uh, an alternative to a knife if you like. You know, I can get my thumb on the top of the axe here and I can use that to pivot the same way I would with a knife. Um, again, I can get some nice long sort of sweeping strokes the same as I would do with a knife. Um, I won't, I won't uh, do it now, but again, you can kind of push down like this and you can make little stop cuts, same as you would with a knife. Um, and again, the, the benefit of this small axe is that if I had a much larger handle on here, it'd be much more unwieldy, so it'd be a lot more difficult to sort of sit there and try and do things like this where I'm sitting down now. You know, the axe handle would be kind of flapping around, it'd be hitting my leg um, and generally just getting in the way. Um, and again, the other reason I, I, I favour this axe over the larger ones um, is I very rarely need an axe with a long haft on it. Um, you know, I, I, I don't cut down trees when I go bushcrafting. Um, it's just not something that I have the, the necessity to do. I might take off the odd branch of a fallen tree or something like that. That's why I've got my saw. Um, and to be honest, when, you're, when I'm um, sort of collecting wood from fallen trees and things like that, I find it a lot easier to actually cut through the wood of a saw, A, it's quicker, um, B, it's safer, um, and C, when you're finished, you've got lumps of wood. Let's see how it So let's, let's say my, my mallet here was a piece of wood that I've cut, um, ready to be processed for firewood. You get a nice, flat, clean cut on the top and the bottom, which then means I can place it down on a solid surface, and I can either use my axe and swing into it, or I can sort of use the, uh, the batoning method like that. Um, so again, for me, um, this shape, size and weight of axe, um, you know, you don't have to go down the Grand Falls Brooks route, that's just my, my preferred uh, manufacturer, I, I really do like their products. Um, I have used several others in the past and there are a lot of makers out there, um, you know, who will make a very similar sized shape and weight axe um, for sort of similar if not lesser prices. Um, but again, you know, just something to think about guys, you know, if you are going out, if you're starting out in bushcraft or if you're looking to get a new axe um, or you're looking to get your first axe, um, just really have a think about what it is you want the axe for. Do you want to be able to go out and chop down trees? Um, if so, then you probably need something a little bit more specialist, I mean ideally some sort of felling axe. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's axes on the market that have got kind of like 20-25 inch um, hafts on them. Um, you can cut down a tree with them, but they're not the ideal axe for the job. And I think a lot of people get this misconception, they get this kind of, this axe that's about this long, it sort of just slips in and sort of sticks out the top of their pack. 
um, and you know I can do absolutely everything with this and you know to a degree at a pinch you probably can you could cut down a small tree with that axe um, you could process firewood you could probably do a bit of carving with it but is it the best tool for the job mm, probably not you know you want to cut down a tree get a felling axe if you want to process a lot of woods um, depending on the diameters get yourself a splitting mall or something like that but again you know there are axes this kind of big that are sort of generally quite good all-rounders um, but if you don't need an axe that's that big if you're only going to be doing a little bit of light splitting you're only going to be doing a little bit of carving maybe um, i would most certainly recommend something of this kind of size um, but anyway guys hope it was useful uh, comments and questions in the box below uh, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and i hope you'll all join me next time thanks guys mm -hmm.